Hey, what's up everyone? James Amero here at Switchwatch, your home for everything Nintendo Switch related. I'm back today with another indie review, this one, Thimbleweed Park by Terrible Toy Box. These guys are both the developers and publishers of the game. Thank you very much to those guys for giving us a copy for review purposes. As always, we're going to give you our honest opinions, should you buy this one, and more importantly, should you spend your hard-earned cash. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump in and find out. It's 1987 and there's a mysterious murder in the town of Thimbleweed Park. You play as Ray and Reyes, two FBI agents who have been assigned to the case and are soon thrust into a larger plot where you need to find out what is going on in this strange town. You feel like you've stepped into another world, one from days gone by and the clues are all around. This could be Twin Peaks or an episode of The X-Files. The plot is told through your character's interactions in this point and click adventure. Through the story there is plenty of humour and more than a few nods to the games that inspired it. Games like Maniac Mansion and The Secret of Monkey Island and like those games the fourth wall is broken on occasion inviting you the player to enjoy inside jokes. It's no surprise then to find out that this game was created by Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick, two legends from the LucasArts team that brought us the above games and inspired point and click adventures for years to come. Games like Broken Sword, Discworld and many other classics that I look back on with a smile. Games that kept me playing and frustrated me for many hours. As the story progresses, you play as five different characters in total. So Agent Reyes, Agent here. Ray, Ransom the Clown, a personal favourite of mine, Dolores and her no, father, no, Franklin. No Each character has their own story to unfold it's with the neither. overarching story. It doesn't take itself well, too seriously, like but that's not to say it's all a laugh. There is I a sinister side to the story as well, and I found myself needing to get further in order to find out more. Just like those games which inspired this, there are a lot of strands to the story with many flashbacks and some plot points that felt squashed into the overall story to fit things they wanted to include. Excuse me. Be with you in a second. The sound in the game is right in I'm keeping with the right times. The environmental audio fits in perfectly with its effects and the background music is subtle. The voiceover acting is done very is well. So it's cheesy as it should security. be for this kind of That's story classic. and each character Hello, has lines. Faces. One thing I did I notice if I'm nitpicking was a slight graininess to the voiceovers which I assume came do. from issues when recording. It's, it's not enough to cause offence but it's there for you if you notice it. Visually this game is no looker. Howdy. It's slightly that's frayed 8-bit style sure. is dated but of course that's Finn part of the Reno's. point. The town is a star here with each area being laid out creatively and making a good setting for the many puzzles. The perspective is something that's kept which did frustrate me in some of the old point and click games and you can tell that even though it's gone for this old visual style there's a lot more power that's been made with the engine and it's actually just done on purpose. Thimbleweed Park stays completely true to its spiritual predecessor, The Secret of Monkey Island, using the exact same nine verbs from that game. Your interaction comes in the form of choosing one of these verbs and then selecting an item from your bag, an area on the screen, or some combination of both. See a gate, for example, and you can choose to use, open, or close it. When docked, you have a slightly odd set of please controls where you use scan. the analog stick I'm to move around the map, the, the A button to select items, and then the D-pad to select one of the verbs. You can use R once you've chosen a verb to snap to the nearest it's selectable empty. area with the chosen verb most of the time. As you progress, you can here. use ZR and ZL to toggle between different characters, which you'll absolutely have to do, and often you'll need to use two characters to solve some of the game's devilish puzzles. It's a good use of the more modern controls, the console era point and click games often plan. suffered with how best to have suitable controls. This way works fairly well but it can still be quite bothersome at times, taking a large amount of time to make three or four selections which are wrong before getting it right. 
Where the controls really make sense is on the move. The game makes excellent use of the touchscreen, you know, taking advantage the of the fact that this game has been released to iOS previously. The game feels easier to play this way and I found it to be my favourite way to enjoy we'll it. Whilst you're on a mission, the game is at its element when you are exploring, oh, so you to talking to the quirky out. residents yeah, or just well, overhearing their choice. conversations. Now, there are many puzzles here and whilst they can be head scratching, yeah. they are Joe's all at gone, least so. logical. The game gives you some respite here as well, with a way to use a phone to get tips when needed. You're also presented with two game modes at the beginning, casual and hard. Casual skips part of the game and plays more like a chilled out story that you're participating in lightly, whilst hard gives you the full point and click experience you'll be used to if you're familiar with the genre. Be warned though, you can't change midway through. The game offers a large story which will take about 15 hours to complete. It's fully voice acted and will give you a bunch of laughs and some frustration along the way. This version of the game is arguably the best choice as you have the flexibility and appeal of touchscreen controls with the additional console benefits of being able to kick back and play on a larger screen. At $19.99 or £14.99, the game is fairly priced. Thimbleweed Park is a throwback to a time when point and click games were hugely popular. It stays true to its predecessors whilst giving you a fresh story and take on this type of game. Like all games in the genre, it really isn't for everyone. Many simply will not enjoy its laid back and slower storytelling style that doesn't rely on skill but rather your attention to detail and cognitive skills. Overall then, for me, this one is a solid 7.5 out of 10. If this is the kind of game you enjoy, you'll absolutely love this one. Massive thank you to all of our subscribers. Thanks again for joining. You might want to check out our written review over at switchwatch.co.uk. And if it's your first time checking us out, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it and want to stay up to date with everything Nintendo Switch related, why not consider subscribing? Thanks again everyone and we'll see you again soon.